pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Tune into something different that makes a difference. At Parent Pump Radio, instead of a ripple, we choose to create a splash. Get energized, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium with your host and parent coach super guide, Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Hi, this is Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. Our show is all about dynamic family leadership, financial freedom, and leaving a profound legacy for our children. So parents, if you're tired of working eight to six and scared of what's going to happen to the market, wondering how you're going to fund your retirement and maybe your children's college fee, and you want to start earning stable, cash-flowing, appreciating income, we can teach you. We can help you create a safe, personalized real estate portfolio generating at least 10000 a month, one house at a time, involve your children in creating wealth, and you can invest alone, of course, but when you involve your family, you empower your children to become financially literate and able to manage their own lives. When you have a family business, you and your kids always have something to talk about. Wealth building brings families together, kids, teens, and parents. Investing is really the new family sport. So what we can do is we find, we acquire, we renovate, and we also manage the property. So we build knowledge and wealth in as little as two hours a month, you can start earning income. So schedule your Is Real Estate Right for Me educational call with me today. Go to my website at integrativeminds with an S dot com. There you can also order my books, True Legacy Wealth, Creating Generational Wealth Through Real Estate Investing, and also Real Estate Investing for Women. So our show is available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, and syndicated on RethinkRadio.org, OneIdeaAway.com, and Arm Radio. We have a wonderful guest for you here today. He is the founder and CEO of Pearl Lemon, a multi-award winning SEO agency in London. And yes, he's coming all the way from England today. He is the youngest of five children to migrant parents who came to India for a better life. And now the uncle to nine nieces and nephew, he has spent most of, most of his life around children and spent the best part of his 20s living like one. Now as a marketing agency and software company owner at Pearl Lemon, he's also a TEDx speaker, ultra marathon runner. We'll talk to him more about that later. He spends much of his spare time using what he's learned to connect educate, and hopefully inspire children in his family. And he's here today to inspire you and your children. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Deepak Shukla. Hi, Deepak. Hey, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, it's always weird when you hear a bio spoke out loud about yourself. You're like, is that me? You kind of just, you know, we just we just kind of get on with it, don't we? You're like, you know, you're caught up in the, in, in the grind, in the grind. And sometimes people will tell you like, Jacqueline, do you realize what you did? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I guess I did do that, didn't I? It just, it didn't, it didn't really. Fit. So, so thank you for the introduction. I'm, I'm really excited to be uh, on your show today. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We have a great topic. Before we get there, uh, I want to brag a little bit about you to my listener <laughs> <laughs> because don't, this don't. is one of the reasons why I had to have you on. Because not just about you know our kids, I was really impressed. You ran a marathon, completed. Three, actually 33 marathons so far, completed two Ironman. You have inked over 40% of your body. That's just to name a few. Talk about <laughs> some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, 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 it's, uh, I, 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 listen, I love adventure, okay? I love making the most of the opportunities that we have in front of us. And life is there to be grabbed. It is a real thing. There's opportunities that you know are forever around us, and I, I am definitely someone who's who's way more yes orientated than I am no. And you know, whilst sometimes less often than not, it's it's bad for me or I get into trouble. Most of the time, I'm like, yeah, let's give it a go. It's like, yeah, why not? You know, as you as as you quietly outlined, it's a reason that you know we're together today because you're right. By by day, I am an SEO agency owner, but this opportunity came up you know you were you were amazing at ex looking at exploring how, how how i could be a fit and 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 you know I, I just i'm a great believer in in that as an approach to life in general so the marathons is like okay why don't we you know why don't i do a marathon and 
you know, so, someone said to me and I said, okay, let's do that. He's like, where do you think you want to do it? And I'd be like, oh, I've always wanted to go to the States. So, you know, my first ever marathon was in Chicago when I was like 20, 22 years old. So I, I, I think that, you know, randomness, which is what my TEDx speech is actually about, embracing the randomness that, that you know, constitutes life and all of its colors has been a big thing for me. So that's why the marathons are Ironman. And, you know, I was like, you know, I enjoy sport. Let, let me give it a go. Let me see what comes out on the other side. Yeah, he also trained with a Georgian former special force sniper. So watch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don't that, get that on his absolutely. bad side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that absolutely came out of That was, that was uh, definitely another adventure. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk about that off camera, right? <laughs> if I need you for some reason. <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but he has backpacked across 60 countries, over 60 countries. So I'm very impressed with that. Yeah, I, I started when I was 18 and, and I kind of just didn't, didn't stop really any opportunity out of school. And that was back in 2004. So for the, yeah, so the, so the parents that are listening will probably identify with what 2004 is. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a little while ago now since I first started backpacking and so I was nine, 18 when I went and then I kind of stopped backpacking at about 24, 25 and then I switched to living abroad. So I stopped traveling so aggressively where I stay in a city for three days, party every day, move to the next city or go and do, you know, kayaking or bungee jumping or surfing or skydiving or whatever it might be. Then I started to slow and I was no longer interested at living such a volume of life in the, the the time I had abroad and then it became a bit more about okay let me go to you know Malaga in the south of Spain for a month let me go to Turin in Italy let me go and live in Brazil for two months and see what it's like and get a feeling of the ebb and flow of the culture so so then it began to transition and both of them were again I guess adventures of different kinds. When I was 30 I also quit my job and decided to backpack around the world by myself. So oh, it was amazing. an adventure. Same thing, New Zealand, Australia, yeah. right? Like bungee jumping, <laughs> back. I mean, we did crazy thing, jumping out of airplanes. You didn't even think twice about it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's funny how age changes and gives you perspectives that you, you didn't have when you, you, you know, you're more carefree and young. And I guess that's also the challenge of, you know, how there's a, a loss of identification with with your children over time, right? Because they just see you as a completely different bloody species. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So talking about children, let's get to this topic because I know parents are really interested. So how are we going to keep our kids learning while they're gaming? Because we're not going to be able to stop them from gaming. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so I know you don't have children, but you have lots of nieces and nephew. Why do you care so much about kids? Look, I, I come from a family where I've got four... There's five of us as siblings. Um, my my cousins is five. My other cousins is three or four. We 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 grew up, and my my cousins were my my friends. That was my social network. Everything was almost like a, a continual running political dance, but you know, family politics, and that was the environment that I grew up in. And then me being the youngest, it also meant that. And when I say youngest, my sisters are like thirteen. 13 years older than me. So there was a big enough gap that as soon as I kind of started to hit 18, 19 and came out of being a child myself, my ch my sisters were beginning to have children. So, 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 so then again, and, and, you know, the, the youngest underneath, beneath myself, you know, I'm, whilst I'm the youngest in my family, my immediate family, there's cousins that were younger than me by a couple of years also. So as I transitioned from, you know, being a teenager into, you know, going to university, I began to, you know, discover that there were again babies all around me because of my 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 my, my siblings. So I think that I've I've always been around children because, as you pointed out, I have a I I, I like adventure. I think to that degree, I, I I've always just felt like a a big kid at heart because you know I, I kind of I haven't you know I quit kind of my formal education no my formal career rather. I did university. I started a life at Deloitte as a consultant. I quit. You know, the longest job I've had, Jacqueline, was six months. I never worked for an employer. For, and, and, and it's always also meant that I think I, you know, identified a lot more with like my nephews and nieces more than perhaps um, maybe some others in my family. And, and that's why. I think that's a good point. Our children look 
at us as parents. But then kids look at you as like, oh, just an older version of themselves, like a big kid. Yeah. And so they would probably listen to you, your wisdom, your teaching much more, and especially you knowing so much about SEO, gaming, and all these things. So I think that's why I thought it was so great to have you on yeah. here because you you kind of bridge that gap between parents and children. Okay, so I think there's a couple of things that what's interesting to me is that we choose to empathize with our children in very specific boxes. And the one of the, when I say boxes, I mean boxes that relate to maybe the first experience of going to school, the, the experience of having to struggle with homework. And, and when they turn to something that, for example, is there's two things, really. There's television and there's gaming, right? right. It's what's, what's incredible is that all of us, and, uh, and you know, to, include, to include myself to a limited degree, we kind of tend to switch off to how they're actually connecting with the characters that exist within a game like Fortnite or the characters of their favorite TV show. Like we do it as a little bit, I think, as children and the toddlers but then we kind of grow up and things get things get kind of lost and what I you know what I found as my nephews and nieces moved from being eight or nine where I could just kind of tickle them a lot into their teenage years I found two things were really powerful number one if I took an active interest in the plot line or the story behind Frontier or Fortnite sorry or some of the games they play like Gran Turismo I could I could get a lot more engaged communication from them like they were interested in helping me understand the world that they occupied because they saw I had an active interest in it. I was like, so how does this work then? So, okay, great. And so are you saying that I could take this gold coin and if I went to this section of the map, I could do, you know, achieve X result. And, you know, they quite carefully talk you through how it works and what you need to do. And, and then also the other element, as you quite right, rightly pointed out, you know, a part of my job involves uploading videos to YouTube, looking at videos that are edited, figuring out how to rank a video on YouTube. So, so, so these things, and also looking at, you know, some of our clients are gaming companies. So that's been really insightful because it allows me to understand why kids love Twitch and why they like, you know, streaming live their own gaming. So, so all of these things were, were, were really powerful. And I found that, you know, for, uh, let, let's talk about James, like my nephew who I've got in mind. I, you know, the more I was able to understand his world and, and one of the struggles that Robin Shanti, my, my, my sister and her, and her husband, my brother-in-law often had was that James is uninterested in education because he's just a big sports guy. He's 13, 14. He loves playing tennis, right? And he loves gaming and he loves tennis. They're like the two things. It's like, it's like if, if, if we're playing Fortnite, game on. If we're playing tennis, <laughs> game on. If it's math, math, game off, I'm like, it's just like, you can't get anything from the kid. You know, th then you begin to think about what, you know, how, how can you apply, you know, math to gaming or how can you, how can you help him build a practical set of, set of skills by focusing what you want to teach him around existing passions? And, and, and that's what I think what we've, we, we, we've got to see it as, you know, for me, it was like, I used to game when I was, you know, I used to game when I was younger and I was like, this is cool. And also, you know, children and adults are making money from it now. And they're making seriously good money. Yes. And that's what we're going to talk about on our second part of the show. So this yeah. is the part one, part two listeners. Deepak's going to talk about how your kids can make money. Absolutely. You know, at the moment, what was with what's happening, of course, in, in, in the global markets with you know COVID-19, etc. Like esports is booming right yes. now. Yes. Oh my gosh. You're right. It's absolutely booming. You've got professional footballers that are turning to it. The prizes in some of the esports World Cups are like millions of dollars. We've got an SEO client of ours who pays us $6,000 a month to help them with their SEO. They've got their own, and we're a small part of their budget, right? They focus on esports. Like they're a gambling company, but the whole gambling focuses around adults who are betting around esports games who are played by children a lot of the time. Wow. So it's, yeah. And so, so, so when you think about the economics around that, that, you know, they can support a $72,000 budget annually just on a third, you know, third party agency for a smaller part of their overall marketing budget, which is probably, you know, a couple of million a year. It's, 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 it's a legit way to actually build a viable income. And 
when we become cognizant to that, then I think it will also help us as adults reframe the way that we look as look at gaming. Gaming isn't the devil. Gaming isn't like the, the, the you know, it's, 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 that's a, an important transition, I think. How do I keep my 13 year old son or he's 12, he's going to be 13 soon yeah. gaming and still learning? The first thing for me that I, you know, have helped James with and that we do together is I'd get him to write descriptive stories that involve the actual game Fortnite. So what, what, what kind of sin, you know, he struggles, for example, with some of his literature and sometimes his numeracy as well. So then we would take the same research methodology that he would use to put together an assignment for English, but we would focus it around something to the extent of, okay, so how would you build a strategy around this character and making sure that he can become champion in the world of Fortnite? He never realized that he was executing strategy in Fortnite when he decided which character he would pick, which character paired with what weapons, which character and which weapons paired with what other characters and what, what difficulty setting and what partners. And, and, and you know, we, we, we walk through, well, why do you pick, why do you pick Aaron to game with? Oh, because he's really good. Okay, but I'm really good. He's like, no, you're not as good. Okay, so what are the key differences between, that make Aaron good and made me not so good. I began to engage with James on that level. We begin to start teasing out the, the nuances. So without realizing it, he was beginning to build like a, stre- a SWOT analysis. I was like, you're doing strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I'd say, oh, so what's a threat to, um, he's like, oh, it's a bit annoying. Like mom, mom comes home and then she gets annoyed. So I like, so we consider your mom a threat to the game, right? And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, she's a threat to the game. That's right. And I'd be like, okay, so she goes in this box. <laughs> You're teaching him the SWAT method already. He doesn't even know what the SWAT method yet. Yeah, <laughs> and awesome. I was like, you, you realize what you're doing. And I was like, okay, great. So now we need to adjust our strategy and not to accidentally discover that mom is a threat to the game. We need to think intentionally about that. And as a consequence, we need to adjust our strategy. Now let's map out, James, when do you tend to play Fortnite? And we're like, okay, great. I, I, t- I play it like four on a Friday, four all the way, four all the way through to seven. I'm so excited about it, etc. I'll be like, okay, so where's everyone else in the house at four to seven? And we just went through an entire process where we, we extracted or abstracted out when he plays, what he drinks before and after he plays, who he's playing with, the people in the game, the people external to the game, what are the kind of pattern interrupts. And, 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 and what was really interesting was that we, we, we mapped it out together because it was just a fun exercise to get him to think logically about everything. And then we discovered the key patterns that we could correlate with him not performing as well within the game. We began to tweak some things and he began to immediately get better scores because games do a great job of scoring how well you're doing how many kills he got in Fortnite, how many coins he collected. So then we were able to run tests whereby I'd say, okay, great, change this. Now let's play the game for 20 minutes now that we've changed two of these things. And he began to score higher and do better. So then we began to track it. So then I'd introduce him to a spreadsheet because I'd say, okay, great, let's track this over time now. And let's put some of this into a Google, uh, a Google sheet. It's like, what's a Google sheet? I was like, it's Excel. He's like, oh, okay. So how do I use a Google sheet? And I'd be like, great. I want to, I want you to prove to everybody what a great gamer you are. And we went on this whole process. It just started from him telling me about it, from him seeing that I was engaged to us running a little bit of an internal, then an external SWOT analysis, identifying his mum being the threat, Aaron being the opportunity me being a weakness because I thought I was good, but I wasn't that good. And then him having to manage those different relationships. What became clear was that he liked having me around, but he didn't really want me to play. So he wanted me to spectate, but not participate. And I was like, okay, great. So how would you convince someone to spectate, but not participate? So you begin to just really develop some interesting analyses of the game using, you know, standard business methodology. We began to, based upon that, build a framework for which he could then tweak different levers to return different levels of success in the game. And then at the back end of it, I began to incentivize him tweaking the system by offering him just basically rewards 
I was like, look, I'll give you an extra five bucks if you can achieve this result in, you know, this framework. And, and that was kind of the journey that we began to go on that kept him gaming, but increased ultimately his abstract and his logical thinking. And it began to translate into improved focus in school. And he noticed that he was able to just pick things up a lot more in, in math or when they were talking about concepts in in, in, in English, when they're talking about different characters, because a lot of it was based around character development, they began to understand the nuances of, okay, so Deepak, I like him to spectate, but not participate. And then my mom's like a, a weakness, but then how can I manage that weakness? Because I've got to get on her good side. So how do you manage a threat that you can't really mitigate? Or how can you mitigate, you know, a present threat? And all of these like funny, funny things we started getting involved in. Pretty awesome. Now, I know nothing about gaming. So That's okay. <laughs> I think a lot of parents out there are the same way. Yeah. I think yeah. it would take a while for me to understand the gaming. For parents who don't really get the gaming, can you give a solution for us to help yeah. our children be engaged? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So where and when you don't understand gaming, approach gaming like you would approach anything that you study as part of whether it's your professional, you know, certified professional development if it's within your career, parents at some level have, have studied, whether it's in academia, whether it's as a consequence of learning a new concept for work. So do the same thing that, that probably some kids do when they're trying to find a cheat for a game or how to get to the next level up. You can watch simple things on YouTube. You can, of course, just look up things on Wikipedia. Or you can think about the games that you are familiar with. Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, is a classic. Or a Super Mario Kart or, you know, Street Fighter. And, and, and the games that a lot of parents will be more familiar with. And, yeah, and, Pac- and the principal- Pac-Man for me. That's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just aged myself. You've outed yourself. Yeah, no, there is a challenge there. But I think that we ask our kids to do things that we require of them. I think that equally, you know, part of this is let's get over ourselves. Like gaming isn't the enemy. You're just making the game the obstacle because, you know, you choose not to engage and learn about it. You know what? It's a a big part of a child's life. And they're going to get involved in this thing for maybe, you know, a thousand hours over the course of five to seven years. Why don't you just take the two to 10 to learn about it? What value do you think you'll get as a consequence of that? So if we look at it from an ROI perspective, then if you invest 10 hours into something that you know that your kid on average is going to spend five hours a week playing, five hours times 52 weeks in a year is like, you know, five, five, it's like 200, it's more than 250 hours. 250 over 10 years is 2,500 hours. It's, It's a lot of time. So given that that's the time they're going to invest, just get up to date with what an RPG is, what an MMOG is, what tokens and this and that. And you'll be able to just understand more about the vehicle that's powering. You know. And also what we forget is that social networks are now being developed through gaming because everything's online. You can wear a headset and you can play with like your cousin, yep. your, your mate Frank, your aunt Sally. So it's not just, it's the, it's the child's version of the water cooler. So yes. especially now when everyone's doing this remote thing because no one, you know, everyone's working from home, kids are probably gaming extraordinarily. But the, 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 the main reason is so they can talk to their friends. I think boys play more video game is the statistic. Girls are more on social media. He'll be, he'll have a screen with gaming. Then he'll have another screen watching YouTube video, watching someone gaming or something, I guess, teaching him gaming. Yeah. And then he'll be on his phone texting or messaging his friends or something. I don't know. It's there are times when he's got three screens going on. Absolutely. I mean, it's the natural, I think, evolution of us watching cinema and then us becoming cinema through reality TV shows and thus, and then us watching the reality TV show, then us watching the live commentary of the live reality TV show uh, whilst having a mobile phone in our hand and responding to, you know, a friend on WhatsApp. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just exactly. a different media. It's different, diff- a, di- a different subject, but the same kind of medium. Yeah. And like you said, you know, kids are making millions, hundreds and thousands. Let's start there. What, what they say, instead of fighting it, join it. Because yeah. there's going to be so many opportunities for our children, especially now with the digital age and what's going on with the coronavirus, that people realize that they can do things at home. So if your kids can make money sooner and you can help them look at it as a business perspective, it's even better. 
Absolutely. I think that, that, and that's the big opportunity. If parents are struggling to find a way to connect to it, then find the way to connect to it. And that might be not the game within itself. It's Google, you know, top gaming, top gamers and what are they earning? Top YouTube stars and what are they earning? Or the the economics of the gaming industry. You know, read up on some of these to start to see that, wow, this is, this is like a, a brave new world. And part of our, I think, responsibility as adults, I can't say, I guess, parent because I'm not a parent, but I think that part of it is to, to recognize that there is this transition. We've got the technology, i.e. the internet, to recognize that we can, we can behave a little bit differently from our forefathers before us. And just as they used to assume that the internet was the devil and then all of us do remote working, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I think it's short-sighted for us to now assume that gaming is the devil it's no you know money flows where the focus goes just all energy yeah and and all of that energy directed at gaming there's going to be naturally a consequence of it is that there's going to be whole digital economics that are going to come as a consequence of it so i also want parents to buy in to the opportunity rather than the cost that is gaming because it's like you know what this is a great way to learn about a medium that you could earn a serious living from it's no different from musicians who bloody play and listen to music all day. Why, why is it any different? Absolutely. So tell us your contact information. My website is, is about SEO. Uh, so a lot of this is my personal experience. But I mean, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and you can find me on online. Just Google Deepak Shukla if, you, if you're listening to this and, 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 you know, or Pearl Lemon, Pearl like Pearl a necklace, second word lemon. But Deepak Shukla, you'll, you'll, you'll find plenty of stuff about me online and my email's kind of everywhere. Just head to my website, hit the contact button and send me a, send me a question. Okay. Yeah, so the, his website is Pearl Lemon. He said the stone, Pearl, and then lemon.com. His name is spelled Deepak Shukla. It's spelled D like David, double E, P like Pa, A, K, S like Sam, H, U, K L A. So just Google that and you should be able to find it. Stay tuned. The second episode, Deepak's going to talk about this pilot program that he's rolling out on developing our children on how to create money out of gaming and how to teach your kids how to create a business out of it. Come back next week and we will see you very soon. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. I had a lot of fun with you, Jacqueline. Okay, so until next time, always be learning, always be growing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Go to parentpumpradio.com and click on the pink box on the top of our homepage to listen to our new and archived shows. To be instantly notified of new episodes, subscribe to our RSS feed. The RSS feed button is located at the top of the page where all our shows are featured. And after listening to the show, go to parentpumpradio.com or our Facebook page to leave your comments, questions, and topic suggestions. Until next time, have a wonderful week.